Pray with me, Lord Jesus, we're all ears. We want to hear what you have to say. Thank you for the privilege of being your vessel. God, I pray that we would hear you clearly and adjust accordingly and press to the future, leaving the past behind with our eyes on you. In your name I pray, amen. I thought we'd start out this first Sunday in uh, 2020 uh, by talking about priorities and giving us an opportunity to look at ourselves and ask the question, you know, do I have the right priorities? So the title of this message is Putting First Things First. And what I want to start out by saying is, God doesn't want a place in our life. He wants 
first place. He wants to be in the first moment of our day. He wants to be a part of the first day of our week. He wants to be the first part of your paycheck. He wants to be first. Our lives are an adventure where we're faced with hundreds, maybe thousands of choices of what we can do and possibilities that we can do with our time and our resources. And we all have a free will. We make good choices. We make bad choices. God promises in Romans 8, 28 that all things work for good who love Him or are called according to His purpose. So God's going to take our choices, whether they're good or bad. He's going to bring good out of them. But He wants us to make Him first priority in our lives so that the sum total of our life will be narrowed down to Him being first place. Now, Jesus is not specific here. This is not about legalism. This is not about keeping a list of do's or not doing a list of don'ts. As a matter of fact, Jesus is quite general about this. All He says is, if you give me opportunity to call the shots in your life, then your priorities will be in the right order. In other words, God wants to be the pilot. He doesn't want to be like the bumper sticker used to say where it says, God is my co-pilot. No, God wants to be your pilot. And when, when God is your pilot, the rest of your life will fall in place. So for our text today, it's simply one scripture. Many of you have already memorized this verse of scripture. We have already sung this passage this morning in our worship, but it's simply seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All these things, what are they? It's whatever is important in your life. You see, the key to getting what you need out of life is to focus on what God wants in your life. Jesus doesn't tell us how to get what we want out of our life. He does even better than that. He wants you to have His very best. So He's going to tell us what we need. He's going to tell us what's important, what's eternal, not temporary. Now, there are lots of gurus out there, and they're making millions of dollars off of you and me, and they're telling us how to get what we want out of life. I mean, there's been more talk shows and more books written on this subject, and they've studied the two questions. Where do I want to go, and what do I want to get? And they've got all kinds of formulas and all kinds of steps that you and I can take, and some of them work and some of them may not work. But Jesus simply says in this scripture, the answer to those two questions is, put me first. Make up your mind today, the year 2020, and every single day of your life until the end of your life, make it your priority to put Jesus first in your marriage, in your finances, in your relationships, in your physical life, your spiritual life, your emotional life, in your job, in your education. If you really do this, God really will take you where you need to go. He will give you what you need to have. I mean, you might want to climb the ladder, but if you do, and then you leave in the wake of that, broken marriages and wounded kids and poor health and spiritual bankruptcy, what good was that? Let's redesign our priorities for the year 2020. Let's take Jesus' word at face value and do what His word says, and to do it every day. I promise you, if we would do that, our lives would be joyful. I promise you that if we would do that, 
our lives would be beautiful and every day would count. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to look back and, and think, every day, every month, every year has counted in our existence. So the first thing that I want you to see in this scripture is that we've got to experience a connection with God. There's two words in this passage. Seek first. The word seek means to strive after diligently. The language there actually has a, a phraseology which means to keep on seeking. It's something that you go after continually. You keep on seeking every day. It's the same language that's used in Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 7. Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? It's the same language. You keep on asking. You keep on seeking. And what do you seek? Well, in, in chapter 6, verse 33 that we read just a few moments ago, it's God's kingdom and His righteousness. Hey, listen, you don't have to pray about it. You don't have to go around and ask for opinions. There's no debate on the subject. You don't need any special extra discernment in order to figure this out. Everything that I do with my life needs to be filtered through those two things. Keep on seeking God's kingdom and keep on seeking God's righteousness. All my work, all my time, my relationship with Amy, my relationship with my daughter and their hus my daughters and their husbands, my relationship with money, who you date, where you spend your time, how you handle uh, your studies, what you buy, what we buy, what, what we give away. We have to ask ourselves. We have to ask God, is this for the kingdom? Is this for His righteousness? Do you understand how powerful this is? How freeing, how transforming this can be. We are bombarded all the time with things that people want us to do. All we've got to do is ask ourselves the question, is this thing that I'm being asked to do, is it about God's kingdom or God's righteousness? Your marriage, your job, your finances, all your relationship, your family. For instance, if someone does you wrong and you're trying to decide how to respond to that person, all you've got to do is ask yourself two questions. How would a person seeking God's kingdom respond to what that person did to me. How is the right, or what is the righteous thing to do in this situation? You see, this is the first step of the first step of the first step. It's to be connected to God. We've got to be able to hear what God is saying. This is what King David did in Psalm 5.3. He says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. First thing in the morning, David connected with God. And then Jesus in Mark 1.35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I'm going to tell you what, if Jesus needs to do that, don't you think that you and I need to do that? If we're going to seek the kingdom, we need to see the king. 
We need to go after Him. Our first priority is to know the King of the kingdom. It doesn't just work giving God the leftovers. And you see, that's what we do. Instead of giving God what's first and what's best, and all through the Old Testament and and the New Testament both, you see it over and over and over again. God is not interested in our leftovers. He wants what's first. He wants what comes off the top. It shows Him that you're really serious about this. It shows Him that you really do love Him. It shows Him that, that you've got your priorities in the right place. I guarantee you, if you spend the first part of your day with God, your whole day is going to go a whole lot better, and you're going to have a whole lot better attitude, and even if it's the worst day of your life, you're going to have what you need in order to get through it. The only place that God wants is first place. He wants the first thought of every day. He wants the first day of every week. He wants the first part of every paycheck. And we have so many choices on what to prioritize. And if you want to make the right choice, then make Jesus your first priority. Experience a connection with God. And then secondly, we've got to establish God's control in our lives. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How do you know if you're connected to God? The moment that you realize that all you want is God's will in your life. The day that you decide, I don't want it if God doesn't want me to have it. I'm okay with that. I just want what God wants. What does the word kingdom mean? Kingdom. It means reign. It means rule. Every kingdom has a king. And every king sits on a throne. And that throne is a seat. It's a a seat of authority. And what do the subjects of the kingdom of the king do? They obey the king. That's their only job. They do whatever the will of the king is. So the question that we've got to ask ourselves, is Jesus on the throne of our lives? Or are we on the throne? Both cannot be on the throne. Do you do what God wants you to do? Or do you just do what you want to do? If you do what you want to do, what happens to your priorities? The dominoes, they just fall. I mean, how's it working out for you? You see, here's the amazing thing. When you decide to do whatever your king wants you to do, you end up getting what you want. You really do, because what he wants is what you want. So don't settle for second best. When we finally surrender to him, he will lead us to say yes to the very best things. Do you really know if God is in control? I can tell you two places to look. Look at your calendar. Look at your checkbook. Seriously, it's that simple. Look at your calendar. Look at your checkbook. How do you spend your time? How do you spend your money? That the answer to that question will reveal who is in control. Everything else is just talk. Listen, you can sing it. You can say it. You can even pretend it. But if you want to know if God is really in control, then spend your time serving Him. Spend your time serving others. 
Spend your time telling your story on how God has changed your life. And your checkbook. It'll tell you if you're living on faith or not. It says in the Bible, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You hear that? Without faith, it's an impossibility to please Him. So if I want to please Him, if I want to thank Him for my salvation, and that's the reason I try to live a good life, is I am grateful that Jesus has saved my sins, past, present, and future. So if I really want to please God and, and show Him gratitude, then I need to come to understand that my checkbook will tell me if I'm living on faith or not because I will do what He tells me to do, period, with that checkbook. I had someone just this week give me a powerful testimony about how they grew up so poor that a part of the time that they were growing up, they literally lived in a car. And how blessed they are. Uh, gone through college, gone, uh, gone beyond college, has a wonderful uh, career now, very blessed, and the privilege this person was telling me to be able to give to God. It was as if the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, just like Jesus said. It's living on faith, whether you got a lot or not. And the answer is so simple. Experience a connection and establish God's control. And then simply, number three, exhibit God's character through your life. It says to seek His righteousness. Not your righteousness, because the Bible says that our righteousness are like filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. So my righteousness is not going to get me anywhere, but when I seek His righteousness, it's going to get me everywhere. It's God inside of us and the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. Be a devoted follower of Jesus Christ. And when we're devoted to Him, people will see the character of God. Our character, our faith, it, it will pour out of us. God's truth will come out of us. When we seek God privately, He will seep out of us publicly. And what a difference in the world that will make. What a difference that will make in you and what a difference that will make in others. Your neighborhood is waiting for you to be different. People are waiting for you to be different at work and at school. They need to see the difference because for some people, you're the only Bible that they're ever going to read. At school, we need to make a difference. At work, we need to make a difference. At, at the grocery store, we need to make a difference. So we seek, we go after righteousness. Now, Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 6, He says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. In other words, our deep down desire needs to be to live right, to think right, to speak right, and to act right. That needs to be so deep of a desire in our lives that it was like a hungry person seeking something to eat. That's what we need to go after. So it's not settling with what you can get by with. It's going all out because of our love for God. And when you put your priorities first and right, and you make Jesus first, His kingdom, His righteousness, then it says you don't have to worry. Wouldn't it be great to just get rid of worry? Can I have a vote for no worry? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. Well, that's the whole thrust of Matthew chapter 6. I mean, all the money in the world and we still worry. Great health and we still worry about our health. Fantastic marriages, we still worry. Matthew 6, 34, the very next verse. Therefore, whenever you see the word therefore, it's there for a reason. Go back to the previous verse. Verse 34 says, 
Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So instead of worrying, go back. Seek first kingdom, righteousness. If you put God where He needs to be, He takes you where you need to go, and He gives you what you need to have. What does worry do? It inverts our priorities. It messes them up. If I start worrying about my job, it'll become more important than my family. If I start worrying about money, then money will become more important than God. If I start worrying about me, then I'm going to become more important than God. What you want becomes more important than what He wants, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a train wreck. Every time we worry, it's a sign that our priorities are out of order. Do I need to say that again? Every time we worry, it's a sign that our priorities are out of order. Seek Jesus first. His kingdom, His righteousness. And don't sit around and ask yourself the question, Am I happy? Oh my goodness. That question has got to be from the devil. I've had more people in my ministry and in my lifetime come up to me and just say, oh, I'm just not happy. I'm not happy with him. Not happy with her. Not happy with my job. Not happy with my kids. You know? Who promised you that? That you had to be happy? All I read right here is seek first His kingdom, His righteousness. I'm going to tell you something. The joy of Jesus is a whole lot better than happiness. Happiness is way overrated because some things make me happy and some things don't make me happy. And believe me, you can ask Amy Kessler, I'm happy and not happy just about every day. <laughs> In the same day. It's not what it's about. God will take care of the rest. That's His job. When we worry, we're just taking over His job. Let God do His job. That's what's wonderful about being a believer. That's what's wonderful about having the Holy Spirit in you. Let Him take care of it. Whatever priorities that you and I choose will ultimately determine the quality of our life, and the productivity of our life. Whatever is first place in my life, if it isn't Jesus, my priorities are all wrong. If my family is more important than Jesus Christ, my priorities are all wrong. If my marriage is more important than Jesus Christ, my priorities are all wrong. If Jesus Christ is not first place in my life, then my life is second best it is abnormal. It is not at all what God the Father intended for my life to be. And I am on the Titanic, and I am sinking fast. I am going down into the waters of death. What does your life revolve around? Do you make yourself the center of everything? If you're the center of everything in this world, did you know that in heaven, God is at the center of everything? If God is not the center of your life right now, what makes you think you're going to like heaven? Can I ask you that question again? If God's not the center of your life right now, what makes you think you're going to like heaven? Because in heaven... It's all about Him. Everything is centered around Jesus Christ. Everything we do, all, all our priorities, all the focus is about Him. Seek Jesus first. His kingdom. His righteousness. It will take you to the next level. Don't you want to graduate up to the next level? Let's not let our life go down to the daily grind. 
you know, don't be boring. Live the fulfilling life. And the fulfilling life comes when we live by faith and not by sight. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of that faith, His kingdom, His righteousness, He takes care of everything else. I don't have to worry about the rest of it. I don't have to be concerned about the rest of it. Keep my eyes on His kingdom and His righteousness. Sounds, it, it just, it's, it's so simple, it goes... Shoo. I mean, just, you, I know you just kind of think, is that it? It really is it. That's it. If I could just sum it up, that's all you got to do. Does that really sound that hard? Man, it is though, apparently. But we've even got the power inside of us to do it. Be connected to Him. Let God control your life and make Him first priority. And you'll be glad you did. And the year 2020, no matter what your circumstances are, will be the best year you've ever lived. And I'm planning on it being the best year that I've ever lived. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for truth. I know that your truth will prevail. I pray that every person listening to this message today, deep down in our hearts, would want to have the desire for your kingdom and your righteousness to be first place in our lives. We pray that that would be our first priority. We would not be concerned about anything else, that you're going to take care of the rest, you're going to take care of our marriages, you're going to take care of our children, you're going to take care of our jobs, you're going to take care of our church, you're going to take care of our finances, you're going to take care of our health, you're going to take care of all of it, God, because we're going to put you first. If there's any person in this room that has never given their life to you, then I pray that they would do that today, that they would let it be known that they would like to be in personal relationship with you and that they would know that their sins can be forgiven, and that they can have a right relationship with you. Thank you for this opportunity. In your name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together and worship.